CataractCoach.com. Iowa choice in a teenager. You got a very young patient with a dense posterior subcapsular cataract. So first, why is the video so dim? The patient is old enough to have just some sedation. No need for general anesthesia. So the patient's having a hard time looking at the light. So we dim the light very low until I can get this in the eye. This is our anesthetic. So preservative-free lidocaine, cut 50-50 with BSS. That's going to help the patient be able to tolerate the light better. Now I can increase the brightness. So in this case, what lens do you put in the eye? Patient starting off with a little bit of a hyperopic refraction. So about one diopter of overall hyperopia looks like about a diopter of, of astigmatism with the rule. Now there are a couple of eyelashes there on the top left of your screen, and I know, I see them. We had a hard time putting drapes on this patient because he, uh, this patient was very nervous. Now there's the incision. We're making that incision going in there. That's a tiny diamond. We're going to expand the incision to about 2.2 millimeters wide. And the question is, what eye well do you put on the patient? Now the patient has the same kind of cataract in both eyes. The patient's definitely going to need both eyes done. And this patient's young. I mean, the patient doesn't have a driver's license yet, but, you know, it's the beginning of his or her life, and this patient's got years of schooling to go, and university, and maybe graduate school. And What lens do you put here? Do you put on a monofocal lens and make the patient emetropic? Plano OU? Hmm, I don't know. What do you think? I want to hear comments. I want comments listed below. Now we're getting the rexes done. I'm holding the eye just in case, so in case the patient moves. But it's a tough rexus because it wants to run out. Look at the direction I'm pulling this. Remember, these young human lens caps are very elastic. You can put tripan blue dye in to help make them a little less elastic, but then they're also a little bit more fragile. So there's a balance to everything in life. So we're getting the rexus done. I also want a good size rexus. I don't want a baby rexus. Because remember, these young, youthful eyes are more likely to get PCO, capsule contraction, capsule fibrosis, so, and phimosis. So I don't want the patient to have a small rexus. So I want definitely a five and a half rexus. So here's some hydro dissection. This nucleus is, of course, butter soft. It comes out very easily. You don't even need a phaco probe. You could just take this out with the IA probe. Again, don't say anything about those latches up there. I know, I know. So let's see what we're going to do here. Putting, uh, okay, Faco probe, just a quick aspiration. This will come out very easily. This will take maybe a couple of seconds. Now let's switch to the IA probe. I like that. I like that change in game plan there because I agree. It's a higher margin of safety. I need to give this young patient a beautiful result without any issues. Notice the bleeding from the main incision. Love it. I definitely want to nick those limbal vessels because that means great long-term sealing for this patient and healing up. I want great stability. This, this surgery has to last the patient's lifetime. So aspirating out all the lens. Lens comes out easy. Let's clean up the cortex here. Let's look very carefully to make sure there's no posterior polar component. And I don't think there is. The capsule looks pretty strong to me. So good vacuuming all that cortex out. Looks pretty clean. So what lens did I choose? It's coming up. I chose a trifocal lens, a trifocal toric lens with the new material. This is a Panoptix Clarion Toric. And I chose this for the patient for a couple reasons. Number one, it gives the patient a really wide range of vision. As a teenager, you don't want to be wearing reading glasses. You don't want to be emetropic, great distance vision, and then to sit and do your computer or look at your cell phone, you got to put on reading glasses. Second thing is, remember, a young person has much better retinal sensitivity than someone my age. If you're 50 years old, your retinal sensitivity is not as good as someone who's 15, 16, 17 years old. How do you know? Look at a flashlight. Get the same flashlight, shine it in the eyes of a perfectly healthy 16-year-old for 10 seconds. Turn the fly flashlight off. How quickly does that young person recover vision? Do it to a 50-year-old. Oh, it takes more than twice as long, doesn't it? Do it to a 75-year-old. Now it takes a long time for the vision to come back. We do know 100% retinal sensitivity declines with age. In other words, it's good to be young. So even though we're splitting the light in this patient, the patient has fantastic visual function. Now, the amazing thing with this patient is on post-op day one, this patient had 20-20 great distance vision, 20-20 intermediate, 20-20 near. Plus, the patient, because the patient's young, will neuroadapt to this lens much better than an adult would. And so even the nighttime glare and halos, it's much easier for the brain to adapt if you're a teenager instead of being 75 years old. 
So there it is, end of the case. Again, patient's trying his, his or her best to hold still and pay attention and look at the light. And I want to thank my anesthesiologist for great IV sedation. We didn't want this patient absolutely snowed. You don't need to do that. You don't need general anesthesia for this case. Why have that risk? And this is my child. I'll do exactly what was done here. This lens and this level of anesthesia. So now BSS on the cannula washing out any retained viscoelastic there. And you can see I like the positioning of the lens. Toric marks are lined up with the steep axis and the central ring of that optic is beautifully positioned. Good looking, nice, generous 5.5 rex. That's what I wanted. I want that big rex because, again, this is going to contract down in the post-op period. And I want to make sure that the eye was going to be stable. And then finally, what if you say the patient ends up getting axial elongation as you know the years go by? What if this patient is 22 years old, the eye's a little bit elongated, and the patient's a little myopic? Well, at that point, you can either wear a contact stone stabilizer, you can certainly do LASIK on top of it. If this eye today is plano and amotropic and happy, and the patient ends up 10 years from now at being minus one or two, well, that's an easy LASIK. So this is the best decision for this patient. I'm so happy with the outcome, and the patient is absolutely thrilled as well. So thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments below what lens would you put for a patient in this situation.